Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, the day is here. The day is here. The Vancouver Canucks are going to free up money. The tweet from Elliot Friedman from about half an hour ago says it all. There is word this afternoon that Vancouver will buy out Oliver Ekman Larson. He will be an unrestricted free agent. Now, when it comes to buyouts, buyouts are what everybody were kind of alluding to when it came to OEL, and this is going to be pretty big, not just for the Canucks, but for OEL as well. What happens when a player is bought out is the player's remaining amount of money that he is owed gets cut into two-thirds, but the time in which that player is owed said money is doubled. So if you're signed to a contract making $5 million every year and you get bought out for the last two years of your deal, $5 million over the next two years is $10 million total. Cut that into two thirds. So from 10 million, you go over to 6.6 .6 million. And instead of getting paid over the next two years, you get paid over the next four years. So the AAV is significantly lower. The time you're spending on the payroll is doubled and the money you're getting is also cut into a smaller portion as well, but you're still getting paid. So that is the buyout formula here. And for Oliver ekman Larson, the guy had four years remaining on his deal, 23-24, 24-25, 25-26, and 26-27. And the remaining amount of money he was owed was, okay, what is that? Uh, there's a buyout calculator here on Cap Friendly. We're going to go ahead and use that just because this is a more difficult thing to do. So, assuming the Vancouver Canucks bought out OEL today, what ends up happening is that OEL's tenure on the Canucks payroll goes from 2026-2027 to 2030-2031. But the AAV, instead of it being $8.25 million, which is actually the total, the retained salary kind of lowers that a little bit, it goes down to $2.4 million a year. So from now, 2324, until 2030, 2031, OEL will be making $2.4 million a year for doing nothing. He can sign a contract with some other team anytime, and he'll still be making that $2.4 million per season for doing nothing. Now, against the Canucks cap, you can see the breakdown here. The Canucks will be paying $146,000 against the cap for OEL this upcoming season, which I don't know how that works, but okay. You save $8 million there, which is cool. Next season, the Canucks will be paying $2.3 million against their cap for OEL. In 25-26 and 26-27, that number rises to $4.76 million a year, which is weird. I don't know how it works, but this is just what Cap Friendly says, so I'm going to go buy it because this is a pretty good website here. And then in the final years from 27-28 all the way to 2030-2021, or 2031, excuse me, the Canucks will be paying $2.126 million against their own cap for OEL and his contract. So you can see the cap hits here broken down on cap friendly. The Canucks are saving a lot of money by getting rid of OEL this season, but that number rises exponentially to four point something million in 25-26 and 26-27. So it's complicated. But the Canucks, at the end of the day, are saving money. You could say this is a pretty iffy move based off of how the implications are going to be on the cap in a few years. Also, you don't want to be paying a guy for much longer than you need to be, which is what they're going to be doing here. 2030 is a long freaking time away. I'm going to be 30 when this is all said and done. And all we yell is off the Canucks payroll and they can forget about his contract even being a thing. But at the end of the day, they're getting rid of him. They're opening up a spot on their left side D. They're not needing to commit that roster opportunity to him. They're freeing up some money, but long term, this will come to bite them a little bit more than if they had just stuck it out. Now, sure, we know that OEL's contract was really bad, just in general, $8.25 million a year. That sucks. That's really, really bad, especially for the caliber of play that OEL would provide. There was no chance that this guy was going to be able to bounce back and have some sort of semblance of an $8 million player in Vancouver. If that happens elsewhere, which is going to be super Canucks luck if it does, he signs a contract with some other team, he all of a sudden gets 50 to 60 points again, and then he's good, then okay, I'll eat my hat if that happens. But it's not going to happen, right? Hopefully not. 
I don't know. While OEL definitely was a calm, smooth defenseman who had a little bit of a physical edge, sort of, he definitely was a lot more of an anchor to this team, so seeing the Canucks use their buyout opportunity on OEL, I mean, it's not surprising, but at the very least, well, I hope they end up using the money for good things, like, that's a lot of money they just freed up here. This year alone, $8 million in cap space for the AAV? That brings them back under the cap. They've got money to go out there and spend now. So we'll see how exactly the Vancouver Canucks are able to use it. For OEL right now, I don't know what to say to the guy. I mean, of course, he's not watching this video, but Oliver ekman Larson, you tried. He came here. He showed up. He was okay. Not worth the money, but he was okay. And at the end of the day, it's not his fault that Jim Benning went out there and made the worst trade in Vancouver Canucks history by sending all that money in Beagle, Erickson, and Roussel away to get OEL, an anchor of a contract, in a win-now move, in a desperate attempt to still make the playoffs, which ultimately cost him his job, which cost OEL his dignity here in this city, and now has put the Canucks in a position where they have to use that buyout spot. Sucks, doesn't it? This trade was seriously one of the worst we've ever seen. And even Connor Garland is on his way out too. Everybody's talking about him getting traded. Meanwhile, look at Arizona. They use the money from Beagle, Erickson, and Roussel to weaponize their cap space and get more picks. That's what the Canucks should have done, man. And I know back when the trade was made, I said that it was okay. But nobody thought that OEL would be this bad. Okay, maybe some people did. But... Yeah, it faded away really quickly. I don't know. I'm stalling here because I got to get the video to eight minutes, but OEL, man, this sucks. I mean, no, it doesn't suck for him. I mean, it's okay that he's gone, but like this entire situation, man, it sucks. Garland, Dylan Genser, the money, ah, it was all there and Benning let it go. Yeah, let's not go out there with a fire Benning. Let's go out there with a thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for screwing over this team to the point that now they're going to have this guy on their payroll till 2030, 2031, paying him two point something million dollars for most of the deal, four point seven million dollars for two of those years, four point seven million dollars AAV for a guy that's not even on your team anymore. The Canucks are going to have to maneuver their way around the cap in 2025 to 2027 in order to just navigate through that process. But either way... Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about the Canucks buying out Oliver ekman Larson. The news comes to us via Friedman, so I'm not going to doubt it. What are your thoughts on this? What do you think the Canucks could do with their extra cap space? Do you think this was inevitable? Do you think this was worth the wait? Do you think they should have done this later? Or is now a better time as any? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99. And bye.